before we really get started, I want to show you this kind of cool coffee cup. And uh, it's good stuff. Uh, it's made even better because it's in a Gene and Renee Travel Adventures on YouTube coffee cup. And we have one packaged right here that is going to be for one of our subscribers, one of you guys watching it right now. And I'll tell you about that towards the end of the video, how that you can win this coffee cup. Folks wonder about the Baja. And they wonder which of the towns, cities, villages that we visited in do we like the best? What our thoughts are on those? And many of you have asked those questions on each individual video. And so we decided in this video, as we finish up our travels in Baja California and Baja California Sur, we're going to talk about those. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take turns at this and we're going to call out one of the towns that we were in. And here's going to be the condition. We had to actually either have a meal there, spend the night there, get out of the car and walk around a little bit so that we can make a, an intelligent comment about the city. And some of you may be wondering about my cool t-shirt that I've got on. I'll show you the back of it in a few minutes. It's, it's a really cool shirt. We got it, I think, what, in Todo Santos? Yeah. In Todo Santos. Okay, Renee, the first city I'm going to call out to you, and we want to hear your honest assessment, just a quick run through, what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, Ensenada, Mexico, up in Baja, California. Ensenada, um, big city, um, lots of people, pretty beach, lots of restaurants, lots of grocery stores, really anything you could possibly need, Costco is there. Um, Kind of more, I would say, Americanized, maybe a little bit. Some um, speak English, some do not. Um, but just about anything you could possibly want is there. My favorite thing about Ensenada would probably be the ease of walking there. Um, me with the car in Mexico, especially in Ensenada, it, it was really crowded. Um, I'm thinking the population there is probably five, six hundred thousand people. Got more of the conveniences of that we're used to in the U.S. When I think of Ensenada, uh, some of the things that come to my mind is some of the people that we met. Met some great people at Carlos. Uh, you probably saw our video about uh, residency in Mexico and, and how to do that. He's an attorney, an immigration attorney, and became our friend. Just a great guy. The people in his office, just, just great people. And uh, I don't remember their name, but the, the folks next door to us when we were in Ensenada the first time as we were traveling down. And we were there for three months. Mm -hmm. And it was cold. It was uh, late January. February and March, and we didn't leave until the 1st of April, and it was rather cold. Uh, no heat, no air conditioning. Yeah, no, you don't need air conditioning, and generally speaking, you don't need heat, but they had some space heaters that kept us from freezing to death, and so that made it uh, made it nice. Uh, but uh, our neighbors there, the folks right next door to us, they had uh, a couple of dogs, and the dogs became our friends. The neighbors mm -hmm. too, but uh, we didn't speak very much Spanish and they didn't speak I don't think any English right. uh, but their dogs spoke treat <laughs> yeah. and so so uh, we became good friends with uh, what Sasha and, and Luna Luna yes. Luna and Sasha there, uh -huh. there's a there's a picture there they are there they are and that uh, <laughs> and uh, good folks there and uh, the restaurant La Cienega oh my gracious mm -hmm. wonderful restaurant there and uh, and then, of course, the new part that they're doing upstairs. And you, you may have seen that in one of our videos uh, recently uh, about uh, Ensenada. And, and that was in the neighborhood we stayed in. Yes, yes. Playa Ensenada. Uh, Playa Ensenada was the neighborhood that we were in, or Ensenada Beach. Yeah. And it's not too far from the marina. Uh, Emilio and Zara uh, were our host as we were coming back up the Baja Peninsula. And we were in Ensenada for, I believe, a week. Their family owns uh, La Cienega, and they're the ones uh, that you saw in that, that video. Great people. We stayed uh, cute, in... Hmm? Cute baby. 
very cute baby. <laughs> and uh, we stayed in the lower part of their house and saw some of the most beautiful views of Ensenada. Mm -hmm. So Ensenada, Mexico, I mean, to me, it's like, uh, you know, living in San Diego, uh, but much more relaxed, not all the traffic, uh, expensive by Baja California prices, or when you think of Mexico prices, but certainly cheaper than uh, if you were in California. Okay, that brings us to our next one that we'll look at. Okay, Gene, so tell us what your thoughts are on Cabo San Lucas. Cabo San Lucas. Now, that's not one that we stayed in. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't sleep there. You know, we just drove down for the day when we were in Todos Santos. And it was only like an hour drive. And we went down there and uh, went to Costco and uh, looked around, went to the beach. The beach, amazing. You could not ask for a more beautiful beach in Mexico than at Cabo San Lucas. I mean, you've got the rock formations off the coast there. People are in the water. A lot of people on the beach. The water was like bath water, warm, uh, as opposed to if you went right at the coast an hour where the water's going to be chilly. Uh, but uh, gorgeous beaches, no doubt about that. The city itself, uh, we went through some areas that, uh, you know, it was just very busy, a lot of traffic, uh, very commercialized. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably some what what we would call uh, seedy looking uh, establishments uh, that maybe sailors would enjoy on leave. You get my drift. And uh, so, I, you know, I wouldn't want to, I would say vacation in, in Cabo San Lucas, you know, spend a week there or something like that, uh, enjoy it. But it's going to be expensive. It's an expensive area. And you're paying for that beautiful beach. You're paying for that beautiful view there. But as far as the rest of it, you know, I wouldn't, I would want to go back for a week. But as far as long term, nah, probably not. Renee, same, what do you think? Uh, probably like you, you said, um, to like, like we were going to try to walk downtown, um, but we couldn't even find a parking space. Um, maybe maybe taking a tour there would maybe be smarter, you know, for a day trip or, like you said, vacation there and be able to walk downtown and see what's what's there. But, yeah, like you said, the beach was absolutely gorgeous. And the, I believe it's called the Arch or whatever. Then you could actually see that from um, Costco's parking lot. Um, that was just gorgeous, and you could take um, glass bottom boat tours out there. We saw a cruise ship that was docked there by the arches, and you know, just beautiful, beautiful area. <laughs> okay, right around the coast from Cabo San Lucas is San Jose del Cabo, and uh, I guess it's fair to jump on to that one next. Okay, what do you think? Um, I liked that one. The airport is there, which is nice. Very nice airport. Um, and the little shops down, it's a gorgeous little area. Um, we probably could have been there longer to look more around. But it has a nice little shopping area. It has a town square that has a church with it. It's got the, the sign, you know, where you take your picture in front of. And they had like a uh, art festival or something. Yeah, it was an time. art festival there, so that was that was neat. But um, gorgeous, gorgeous town. Smaller, seemed more relaxed, but you you still have because cruise ships are coming in there, and um, you know a lot of vacationers there. So you still have the people that are enticing you to go into their shops, to go into their restaurants. So, you know, it's that, that, you know, I think I could probably say most Americans don't like. That, you know, not a really a form of harassment, but, you know, that pushiness that, you know, no, no, no. You know, we're, we're looking, you know. Um, kind of like physical telemarketers. Yeah, they're, they're you know, 
And of course, when you have Jenny in a stroller, it kind of attracts stuff. Um, but easier to get around there, easier for parking. Um, much, much less traffic. It reminded me kind of like some of those uh, boutique communities uh, that are like outside of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, where you know you get the brick streets and you've got mm -hmm. the fountains and you've got uh, the little uh, boutique shops and mom and pop places and all that. And so right. Very nice, but but they're again expensive. And right. uh, if if you're wanting if you're wanting resort Mexico, then certainly that's that's kind of an area that you'd want to go to. But if you want real, you know, enjoying Mexico, slower pace of life, uh, cantinas and uh, street tacos, not, nah, it's it's not. Hour north. An hour north, that's right. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll go an hour north. Renee, where, where is that place at? And ask me what you think. What, what did you think about Toto Santos? Todos Santos. We spent uh, the month of May and June mm -hmm. in Todos Santos and could have stayed there right on. I mean, love mm -hmm. Todos Santos, Mexico. And it is it is not right on the beach. It's not it, The city itself is inland a little bit, uh, but you drive or you could you know, bicycle or walk uh, not too far to the beach. And uh, just south of there is Cerritos Beach. It's a surfer beach. Uh, that's down there near uh, Pescadero. But uh, Todos Santos, what was that beach there? Do you remember? Las Tunas. Las Tunas, yeah. Las Tunas Beach. And uh, we went there, I don't know, half a dozen times or more. And most of the time, we were the only ones there. There'd be nobody else on the beach. Uh, maybe see one other person with a dog way down mm -hmm. further down the beach somewhere. But we would let Jenny off of her leash. She would run. She enjoyed it. And uh, Toto Santos, uh, a lot of, I mean, you can eat in a different restaurant, I think, every day of the week. Uh, some of the best food you're ever going to have. Mm -hmm. uh, excellent uh, location. And we met some great friends there. Uh, the people uh, are just fantastic. Uh, I had the first flat tire like in 30 years. I was trying to get the lug nuts off of the tire, and Renee was not there. She Not that she could have helped me get the lug nuts off of the tire, but uh, she was back in Virginia for a few days, and uh, a guy stopped. And the guy, uh, well, he rode by first. He had to drop some family off at his house. He came back. The guy is in a, in a suit and tie. Works at a jewelry store in town named Angel. And Angel, if you're looking at this, thank you, man. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for helping Alvaro. Alvaro mm -hmm. is a local realtor there. In fact, we did a video with Alvaro talking about the real estate market and the price of houses there. And uh, I mean, just a wonderful, wonderful friend. We went out to eat with him several times and uh, visited in his house. Uh, we Jenny met his kitty cats and his kitty cats met Jenny. And all was good in the world. Nothing bad happened on that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alvaro is just, just a, I think he's a good example of the people of Toto Santos. Just a, a good mm -hmm. guy. And uh, we met somebody else there. We were at a pizza restaurant one night. Anika. Yeah. Yeah, from Colorado. Wonderful little young girl. So sweet. Took her to the beach with us. And we took her... Um, another place with us and and we just enjoyed sweet Anika and the Hotel California is uh, there in Toto Santos you know there's debate is that the Hotel California of the Eagles you know fame uh, evidently the Eagles sued them and said you can't claim that you're the Hotel California that we sang about so who knows, but a lot of people get photos. A lot of neat stores there, um, mm -hmm. ice cream places. Uh, Good Italian restaurant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, my gracious. Alvaro took us to an Italian restaurant. Do you remember what the name was? Il Giardino. Do you remember the lady's name of it that ran it? Your friends on Facebook. Daniela. Daniela. And uh, she is from Italy mm -hmm. and has the restaurant there. And... I had never had gnocchi before, 
and I'll never have gnocchi again that tastes as good as the gnocchi she made. It was in a truffle sauce, and Alvaro suggested it, and oh, my, I remember making the comment then, if I, if there was one thing that I had to eat every single day for the rest of my life and be happy, it would be that. Mm -hmm. Daniela, wow, excellent restaurante. Yeah, try El Giardino if you're there. Okay. Renee, what are your thoughts about uh, Toto Santos? It was interesting because it's a small, true little Mexican town. Um, good people, friendly people, helpful people. It was interesting seeing the Pacific Ocean, especially up close there, because um, with us being in Virginia near the Atlantic Ocean, um, the Pacific was very violent, beautiful. Um, and like Jean had said about Las Tunas, um, that was right on the water. You don't, we didn't dare get in the water because it was so rough. Um, but beautiful sunsets. I mean, just beautiful, relaxing area. Um, Toto Santos has no, um, chain grocery store. Um, so that was a little bit different. So, you know, you would go into town and get your fresh meat and you would go to the fruit and veggie places and get your fresh fruits and veggies and and they did have little local owned um, grocery stores that were small mom and pop little places. Um, and it was funny going in to try to get cheese, you know, and... and yeah, American, you know, used to slice cheese. No, don't do it. <laughs> they don't do it. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, it's adapting and fitting in in their community. And it was wonderful. Um, just, you know, if you want to go to Mexico and you want to get the full experience, I believe Toto Santos is it. Um, because it's, it's local. Everything's local. Um, you know, you can drive to Costco. You can go into the little little markets there and get Costco branded things because, you know, us Americans have to have Costco. Um, so you go in there, but they're raised prices. But, you know, there you can... You can see the local dogs trying to walk in, you know, just really, really different than, and just beautiful, beautiful place. Also in Toto Santos, we stayed at a beautiful little casita. Um, Greg and Lindy and um, their two dogs were Nikki and Riley, and they were they were really sweet. Jenny kind of did not like them, <laughs> so they really would watch out for her, and when they'd see her, they were like, Psh, they were gone, but I would go out and mess with them, because I like dogs. So, Jean, what did you think about La Paz? La Paz. Okay, uh, La Paz is not on the Pacific coast. Uh, it is uh, inland over on the Gulf of California or the Sea of Cortez mm -hmm. and La Paz is it's a large city but it doesn't necessarily feel like a large city mm -hmm. it's not large city driving like you have in Ensenada or Cabo San Lucas uh, very walkable got a great Malacan oh yeah the Malacan is right on the water Beautiful. And yeah, and then they've got. Uh, I think they had bike paths and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, if you had little scooters or whatever, or, or you're walking. Great restaurants. One that comes to mind, El Mesquite. We ate there. Oh. And what was that we had there? Um, Chateaubriand. Oh my goodness, the Chateaubriand there. Oh. The best steak you ever put in your mouth. It was so and good. And the fresh vegetables with it were mm -hmm. so so good. Uh, Chris and Jessica are the ones that told us about that. Right. And uh, they, uh, their, their channel is Sailing Blue Pearl. And we got to have breakfast with them one morning. And mm -hmm. they told us about uh, eating there. And, uh, oh, my goodness, in the market. They took us uh, to, the, the uh, to the market to market there. Oh, There's great. a bunch of markets, but, but the one we went to was really nice. A lot of fresh foods that you can get mm -hmm. there. And 
in La Paz, we were in a grocery store there. And uh, was it in Shedrawi? Shedrawi. Shedrawi. The one that Jenny got to go in. That's right. Jenny got to go in her stroller. <laughs> and this is one. Does your grocery store have an escalator from the parking lot taking you up into the grocery store? I mean, oh my gracious, such a nice grocery store. Anyway, we were in there, and uh, like I usually do, I'm walking around, Renee's shopping, and I'm shopping, but if I see somebody, I'm going to give them one of our cards, telling them about our YouTube channel and inviting them to come along for the journey. And we met this uh, couple in there, uh, Bob and Lynn, mm -hmm. and gave them a card. A little bit later on, we were at the checkout line uh, and saw them again, and they said, hey, we, we got a lot of groceries. We didn't intend on getting this much. Yep. Uh, you have a car? And we said, yeah, we got a car. And they said, we're in a boat at the marina. Would you mind giving us a ride? Mm -hmm. And so, we, yeah, sure we would. And we did that. And, well, what happened from that? Um, we became really good friends and um, kept in touch. And they took us out on their boat. We went out to eat several times with them. On their boat, you want to go back and watch that video because oh, we go by nice. and you see Steve Jobs, you know, the founder of Apple, Steve Jobs, his his ship uh, that he had built. I don't think he ever set foot on it. I think he, uh, he passed away before it was completed. Uh, but it is there, and oh my goodness, so gorgeous. And uh, you'll get to see Bob and Lynn in an upcoming episode because they went back to Colorado for the season. And as we're traveling back, towards Virginia in the next episodes. Uh, it's going to take us a while to get there, and we're going to take you along and let you see a lot of cool places. And one of them is, well, we make several videos across Colorado, and we'll show you Bob and Lynn's house uh, that they're building there and the area, and it's it's a really neat state. I, I don't think I'd ever been in Colorado mm -hmm. before, but uh, it's up there at the top. It's uh, one of the, my favorite places uh, to travel to. Sweet, sweet couple. Very sweet couple. Good friends. Mm -hmm. Very good friends. What do you think of La Paz? I liked La Paz. It is, it is big, um, but it's, it's walkable because we what one day we walked what close to seven mm -hmm. miles, so it was it was good. The beaches there are gorgeous. There's the Balandra Beach, which. Um, you have to wait in line to get in there. Plus, there's an entrance fee. And then it was kind of iffy about whether Jenny could go on that beach. So, we went a little bit further down to Tecolote. We I think know, it's Tecolote. I'm not saying it correct, but... I don't it, say a lot of words in Spanish <laughs> correctly, and people call me out on it, and thank you for doing that. Yeah, for we're helping learning. fix me. <laughs> But we, we drove down to there, and you could actually drive on the beach. So we put the Subaru Forester to the test, and it did really well. The sand was white. It was nice temperature. It was shallow. You could walk and walk and walk out so far. And if, and if you look um, in a video that we posted earlier, you could see a ferry go by. So the ferry that, that runs from La Paz to Mazatlan, um, you actually catch it in La Paz. So you could actually see the Baja ferries go by. You could find your own little space to get and nobody bothered you. Um, you know, dogs were running and, and Jenny had a ball. We took her out in the water. Um, it was just really, really nice. More, more, I'd say, of a family beach. You know, not crowded, just very, very nice. And in La Paz is where we met Brighton West. And Brighton, mm -hmm. uh, his channel is almost retired in Mexico. And uh, had some wonderful conversation with him. Had a wonderful lunch with him as well. Brighton, thank mm -hmm. you for, for that. So is La Paz somewhere that you would want to go back? Oh, yes. Definitely. I mean, if you're if you're rating places on the Baja Peninsula, uh, you know, one being somewhere you don't want to go back to, ten being somewhere that you definitely want to go back to, where where does La Paz fit on that scale? Up near the top. 
Yeah, it, it would be a ten. Yeah, yeah, it's um, you know, La Paz translated as peace. Yeah, the peace. Yeah, and it's um, you know, the people again are are just so nice. Um, food is excellent. And Brighton had told me about because I was having some back issues mm -hmm. there. Brighton told me about Dr. Mike, and I think I did a video on that hurt in Mexico or something like that. <laughs> And uh, Dr. Mike worked for like an hour, hour and a half on my back. And, I mean, he fixed me. I was good for the next six or seven months. And uh, if you're in La Paz and you need chiropractor or holistic type mm -hmm. uh, medicine for that, uh, he's, Dr. Mike is the guy to see, I can tell you that. So La Paz, hey, two thumbs up. Okay, the next one on our little list here, El Triunfo. Now, we didn't spend the night there or anything, but we did visit there. We got out of the car, we ate in a restaurant, we walked around, took a tour of a museum, checked it all out. Uh, what were your thoughts on El Triunfo? It was a cute little town, very small. Um, I, don't, I don't even know if we saw our grocery store. Yeah, I, I doubt sure that was... more than a couple of hundred people live in El Triunfo. Yeah, Triumpho. very small, but... Um... Really neat place to visit if you're, you know, in Toda Santos or in La Paz. Yeah. Yeah, just um, ate at a good restaurant. Well, really, you know, if you're in Cabo or, or San Jose del Cabo, it's just as close to go to El Triunfo as it would be if you're in Toda Santos going there. Cause right. It's kind of uh, on that Trans Peninsula or a highway. And, uh, pretty, um, pretty highway to travel. Mm -hmm. Yep. We saw a road runner. Yes, we did. Across the road. <laughs> Looking for the Acme truck and the Coyote after that. <laughs> but uh, El Triunfo, you know, it was a mining town, and the smokestacks to the factory that was there for the, the mining company uh, were designed, and I don't know if he was there, if he actually visited or not, but it was designed by Gustav Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower guy. Mm -hmm. And we ran into his name in some other places in the Baja Peninsula too, yeah. uh, as far as design work and all. So, El Triunfo it was a neat, neat uh, area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now on to Guerrero Negro. What did you think of that? Guerrero Negro. After you cross from Baja California, right into Baja California sewer, you're there, and it's on the Pacific Coast side, and. If you've not seen the episode we did on the salt mining there, or the salt operation, salt flats, uh, that was an amazing video. Mm -hmm. That was an amazing trip. And our host, Edgar, mm -hmm. yeah, Edgar, we stayed in his Airbnb as we were traveling down the Baja Peninsula back uh, first part of the year, or in the spring, I guess it would have been. Mm -hmm. And then we stayed in his Airbnb again as we were coming back up and... He's the one that took us out uh, on the salt flats. He works for the company there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, you know, it's not a city. It's not a large city. It's not one that you're going to go in and stay because it's all touristy and all. But if you're wanting a neat city with a, or a neat town with a cool vibe to it and, you know, you want to go out on some whale watching uh, adventures and want to go out and see the salt flats, mm -hmm. what were your thoughts about Ghetto Negro? I liked it. Um, so we stayed in a really nice Airbnb, and Edgar and his wife Avila really um, thought of everything there. Uh, okay, let's jump back up the coast a little bit into Baja, California, and just north of Ensenada, we stayed in Rosarito. Oh, Rosarito. Gorgeous, gorgeous area. Um Really didn't get to look out to the, say, the little town itself. We drove through it, and it was pretty well populated, so traffic was a little heavy. We splurged and got an Airbnb on the actual, on the ocean, and it was gorgeous. Gorgeous views, gorgeous sunsets. Um... And when you get up really early in the morning, you'd see the dolphin out playing just right off the coast. Definitely a beautiful beach area. You would go down to, you know, to kind of walk on the beach and there'd be families there, you know, like having a barbecue on the beach. And 
we met Luis there, um, who took us to Tijuana, and um, just really, really nice, nice, nice area. And thank you, Renee, for saying Tijuana, because there again, I mispronounce everything, and like a lot of gringos, I call it Tijuana. <laughs> there is no Awa. There is no Tijuana. It's Tijuana. We don't know for sure. Rosarito, like, like Renee said, we didn't really go into town that much, just rode around a little bit, but just the scenery of the ocean and the Airbnb that we were in, it was one of the most beautiful places that I think I've ever been in for spending the night and being able to look out and see the gorgeous sunset and the whales and dolphins and just, I mean, gorgeous. Go back and look at that video. Uh, I'll... A lot of these that we talk about, we'll put all these links, I guess, in the description section so that you can check them out as well. Uh, but yeah, Rosarito, that is definitely somewhere that I would want to go back. In fact, Rosarito is definitely somewhere that I would want to live uh, at least for a year. Uh, nice area. Nice area. Okay, Nay. Santa Rosalia. It was um, interesting. It reminded me a lot of... Um... Key West, Florida, because uh, a well, lot the architecture. of architecture. Yeah, a lot of the houses were wood, which was real unusual to see wood houses there. Um, well, because a lot of stuff is stucco and and block or right, or, right. So it was um, interesting. We really we looked some around the little town, but. As far as really checking it out, I don't think it was that much there. Well, we only we, we got in in the afternoon, looked around some, spent the night, and then left out the next morning. Yeah, so we were we were more of in a hurry, you know. They had yeah the mines. We kind of got there too late to go in them, um, which would have been interesting. Interesting, but I'm not you know. I have a theory that when you retire, everything in the universe is trying to kill you so you don't get to enjoy your retirement. And so I'm not going in a mine. No. <laughs> but um, I believe the sand on the beach was black. Yeah, and parts of the area, I think it was. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so that was interesting. Um, but yeah, small little area. Hey, remember the church there? The church was a prefab built church over, I think, in France. And it was originally, like I say, a mining town. It was, it was a French mining town. And the church was designed by, there again, our friend Gustav Eiffel. And uh, that was kind of a neat thing to see there. Okay, Gene, so we're going to jump far north. And uh, what were your thoughts on Valle de Guadalupe? Well... It's the vineyard area, uh, a lot of world-class vineyards in that part of Baja California, and, you know, mountainous terrain, gorgeous, well, not, I wouldn't say mountainous, but uh, very hilly uh, terrain, and uh, gorgeous area, agricultural area. I don't think there's a lot to do there other than, like, the, the bed and breakfast and the vineyards and the restaurants associated with the vineyards. And we went, uh, we were looking for one restaurant in particular that we'd seen, I think, on uh, TripAdvisor as this is the one you got to go check out. And we stopped and asked probably six different people and we, they'd get, tell us how to, you know, go here, turn there. I mean, and some of them spoke English. Some of them were from, uh, from the USA and told us, you know, oh yeah, no, not a problem. Just go down. And we would go down a dirt road for what seemed like a hundred miles, probably just you know, three or four miles. And, you know, we'd come to one vineyard. It was not the right one. We'd come to one restaurant, not the right one. No. Never did find that daggone restaurant. Maybe they should have given me the directions. Ooh. Renee <laughs> is better on directions and navigation than I am. I'll give you that. Yeah, one. but we, but we did find a nice place. We did, mm -hmm. and we made a video there, and they said for Jeannie to come on in, and why not? They had a cat in there. And, and a dog. And a dog. Uh -huh. and, so, and the cat, when we first went to sit down, the cat was sitting uh, in the, at, 
in the chair at the table with us. And uh, <laughs> it was, it was asleep. Yeah. It was friendly. But it was, I mean, we're talking about five-star, world-class restaurant and uh, winery there. I mean, it was very nice. And the guy opened it up early. It was not scheduled to be open, I think, for another hour. And he said, come on in. We'll open up for you. And yeah. they opened up the next lunch for us. And uh, it, it was it was great very good i would i would want to go back to valley de guadalupe and stay at one of the vineyards for mm -hmm. at least a week and just experience the peace and the tranquility and the uh, uh the atmosphere of that area right okay so renee valley de guadalupe what did what were your thoughts um it was nice you didn't get too far out of ensenada and it totally changed yeah, because it's yeah. not a, the big city feel, and then right. instantly you're, you're in agricultural area. Right, and um, kind of hard to find places. You see a lot of tour buses because people are taking these tours into the wineries. So that was um, a little different, but, but the scenery was gorgeous. Maybe the tour bus companies take the signs down that give you directions so that you have to use a tour bus company to actually find anything. I, they they may. Yeah. Who knows? So Valley de Guadalupe, would you want to go back? Yeah, it, it would be interesting to, to um, stay on a working winery because when we were there, I thought that um, maybe we would have gotten a tour into the vineyards, but we didn't. Uh, which may be something that, you know, maybe only certain ones do that. Um, so that would be interesting to do, you know, actual walking out into the vineyard. And we were kind of on a timetable by this point. Yeah. Uh, we were working our way back towards Virginia, and so we needed to, to make things uh, click to be able to get where we needed to be, right. when we needed to be there. And we'll tell you more about why that is and mm -hmm. why we needed to come back to Virginia uh, for a season for a time and we'll tell you about that in an upcoming episode. So Jean we're gonna change directions again and what did you think about San Felipe? San Felipe and we're look there again we're not sure we're saying this right <laughs> yeah. if you know differently drop it down in the comment section tell us how we are supposed to say this, but we think it's San Felipe. But that is the northern part of the Gulf of California side mm -hmm. of the Baja California, Baja Peninsula. And it's a, you know, small town. Uh, I think, you know, if you're into Baja racing or taking some of the eco tours out in the desert and seeing cacti and... and uh, experiencing that, uh, I think it'd be the place you want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, the beaches there, gorgeous beaches. Uh, lots, of, lots of families. Yeah, lots out. of families. And we ate at some good restaurants uh, mm -hmm. around there. And uh, the folks were very friendly, very nice people. Or at least, you know, the, the ones we ran into were very nice. Mm -hmm. It's a hot, it's a hot area. Uh, your summers are going to be very hot there. Uh, if you remember the Airbnb that we're staying in, the water coming out of the faucet was warm yeah. and that was turning the cold on yeah. that was you know, warm cold water i would want to go back and i guess go out in the desert and take some of the tours on it i've been having some back issues for years mm -hmm. and i don't know that i could ride on a dune buggy out in the desert and blue 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 you know that kind of thing i don't know that i could do that but renee you know, she'd that like to yeah yeah um, it was a cute, cute malecon, mm -hmm. um, very heavily, um, patrolled by the policia. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, if you were out during the night or whatever, you felt, you felt safe. Um, and you're closer, to, maybe it's because you're closer to the border. Maybe uh. so, because we had never seen that much active and they were just you know riding around um but yeah lots of restaurants i mean because you could walk on the other side of the um malecone and you could walk through restaurant and, and gift shop and, and you know all the t-shirts 
very um, touristy, I think. Um, good food. We had, had good seafood at a restaurant that was very nice. Jenny liked it. <laughs> um, you know, and that that's, that's the thing that's neat to us is that she's older and we want to spend as much time with her as we can. And all the places in, generally in Mexico, say, you know, bring her on in. And, uh, which is nice because she gets to experience, you know, things too. Um, you know, so that, that part is nice. And especially the really upscale, I would say, restaurants have no problem. Um, I mean, so, she's in an enclosed trailer. Or uh, she's in an enclosed uh, stroller. Stroller, for goodness sake. Yeah, so. and she's, she's deaf, so... She's generally quiet unless she sees another dog. Um, but, you know, so that that's interesting to us is that she can go in places with us. Yeah, I know some of you are going to drop comments down there below. <laughs> you know, well, it's good for you. I don't like dogs in restaurants. And I get you. I understand. Yeah. I, I don't like kids in restaurants. So, <laughs> I don't know. I'm joking. I don't mind kids in restaurants. I just don't want to eat beside a table where the kid is screaming the entire time that I'm trying yeah. to eat my meal. But she doesn't shed, so, you know, and she's clean, so. Poodles are that way. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to throw three of them out at you because we were kind of in all three of these little towns. They're generally in the, not too far apart from each other. Uh, Los Barrios. Uh, El, I keep saying El Sargento, and somebody corrected me and said it's El Sargento. Uh, it's not a G, it's an H sound, El Sargento. And the other one was La Ventana. Uh, those were three that we did little day trips to. Mm -hmm. Might have been on the same day, or uh, I think we took... We took uh, Anika. Yeah. I know to Las Barillas. Yeah. yeah. What were your thoughts on, on those three little towns? Uh, um, nice little beach towns, pretty. Um, Las Barillas had a beautiful beach. Um, it was hot white sand. <laughs> um, I mean, it was very hot. Um, but you could go, like, if you were eating at a restaurant on the beach, I mean, you were right there. And it was really pretty. Uh, water had the... Uh, it was more of a Caribbean looking water there. Um, really, really nice. Um, small little town. Looks like lots of restaurants there. We didn't we didn't eat anywhere there. We went back to Toto Santos and ate. On that, that occasion, that but day. then when we were in, uh, was it? The other two were closer yeah. to La Paz and um, beautiful beaches. And we did eat, was it in El Sorrento? Yes, we ate right on the beach. Yeah, yeah. I mean with a uh, cabana-like roof over top of us, right, uh, right, right on the beach. Oh my goodness. Excellent food. Oh, excellent. Kite surfing. They do a lot of kite surfing. Kite surfing. Along that area. Yeah, Las Barillas and... Um, La Ventana. La Ventana. And La Ventana had the um, hot springs, but we didn't... We, we were there just a short time, so we didn't get to see that. But the windsurfing, that that must be a really hot place to do that because it was very windy. and um, But I think we were pretty much maybe in off-season or something because a lot of the places were closed. Uh, you know, I would definitely want to go back to that area mm -hmm. and, and stay for a while, a couple months, and check it out. Uh, it, it seems to have the vibe of, you know, that Baja vibe to it, where it's, right. you know, the, on the beach, uh, slow pace of life, uh, just enjoy yourself, hang out on the beach all day long, uh, take a book with you, take a nap, whatever, you know, get out in the water, play around some. Uh, I could I could stay there for a while. Yeah, a lot more relaxed. Oh, yeah, definitely mm -hmm. relaxed. Right. So, Jean, what did you think about Loreto? Oh, Loreto. 
I liked it when we first went down. That is a gorgeous town, a gorgeous area. Uh, the church there, uh, the the Malacon is gorgeous. The walkway mm -hmm. down by the beach. Uh, in fact, we sat out on the beach and I went swimming some with Jenny. And uh, I like Loreto. Uh, the food, we ate a great pizza place there. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, Pan to Pan uh -huh. is a uh, sandwich pizza bread place that we ate at Very in fact good. we ate there going we ate there coming mm -hmm. back uh yeah. if we went again for 30 minutes we'd be eating there <laughs> great food and uh i like loreto i think uh, laura brana had mentioned uh, loreto on her youtube channel uh, that she loved it and so we just had mm -hmm. to check that out of course and we found out why uh, it's a gorgeous town and uh i like it uh, I, mm -hmm. I would want to go back how about you Oh, yeah, that one's easy to navigate around, either walking or driving, because it's smaller. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it has a marina. And it's, um, the beach is neat because it has the little cabanas, I guess you call them, where you could sit underneath the... Um, Palapa roof. Palapa roof. And that's nice. And, you know, you can watch families down at the beach and that's always interesting to me um, Malacan is very nice and then the streets that you can walk through that's non-driving by the church and all it has some nice little shops and restaurants and um, it's one part of it where it's completely covered mm -hmm. That's really pretty. Well, covered by the, the trees are grown together yeah, there. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's really pretty. Um, but yeah, very very nice, but very warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. AKA hot. Hot. During the summer. Yeah. Okay, a couple of towns that we drove through, stopped, got out, looked around, and that fulfills the requirement <laughs> for this one. Miraflores. And Mulahe. Mira Flores. Pretty little town. Uh, quiet. Um, you didn't really see people out except the people that were working on the area of the street. Uh, we parked near a police station. <laughs> um, but yeah, just gorgeous. Gorgeous flowers. And don't read anything into that. We parked near the police station just because <laughs> that's where we found parking. Yeah, at. street parking. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, very, very nice. Um, yeah, just nice, quiet little town. What about Moulay? Um, First, we were saying it incorrectly. Yeah, Moulay or Moulage. something. Moulage. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank that, you, whoever corrected us on yeah, that one. That was, that one reminded me of another little town that we went in. Probably um, Santa Rosalia, uh, but not as big. But it, as you're driving out to where the, we saw a lighthouse, so we were trying to get out to there, and um, so you're on, you know, Sandy Road, um, but you look across, and there's, like, a lagoon, and it was, and, you know, it's like, oh, we're, there's Gilligan's Island over there, <laughs> and it was just really pretty, and um, you crossed over a, a section to get to where the lighthouse was and so you're actually having one part of water coming in really neat area small small town um but just it had that lagoon feel to it i mean definitely you know Tropic. a traditional traditional uh mexicano uh, town little small right, town right I don't know that there's anything else to do there other than just enjoy the town. Uh, right. But, uh, and you could probably do some, uh, I think there's some like cave tours and, you know, uh, you know, eco tours that you can do from there. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I read something about that. But yeah, but, uh, but neat with the, with the section of the lagoon yeah. separating. Mira Flores I liked, but definitely uh, Mulahe would be more, uh, in line with wanting to go back and see something again mm -hmm. and go a little deeper, go a little further, check it out more. Right. Uh, 
I was just, yeah, I was thinking if, if if you're gonna refer to me as Gilligan, you can be Marianne. You're my Marianne. I'll be Gilligan. Just don't call me the skipper. Okay, Renee. As the gringos would say, what's your take on Tijuana? But it's not Tijuana, it's Tijuana. What's your take on Tijuana? Um number one, I did not want to drive there. <laughs> No, thank you, Luis, for yes, driving there for us. Because we would have been so lost and probably never seen hardly any of it. Right, because we'd be just trying yeah. to find a parking space, trying to get uh, lost and and big city, a lot of people. Yeah, very big city. Um, interesting city. I would really like to go back and check it out more. It was. Um, Luis took us to really pretty areas. Um, it was neat to go down where the wall was. Mm -hmm. I think it was the most northern part of Mexico. Oh yeah, because you're right there at the yeah. border. And actually the, the wall went into the water, which was kind of interesting to me thinking water's water, you know. <laughs> But, Certainly, you can swim around that wall. Yeah, you know. yeah, but just very interesting that it was at that far. Um, lots of people there. Um, they were taking pictures around the sign, of course. Um, that's a big hot spot. Uh, really interesting to walk downtown and go. We went to Caesar's restaurant. Oh, wow. If you haven't seen that that one, yeah. you need to go back and look at that one at Caesars. Yeah. That was, wow. Yeah, and um, where, the, where the Caesar salad came from is where right. it was invented. And actually, um, Luis getting me to eat something that you would never be able to get me to eat. Don't don't tell him what it is. You've <laughs> got to go back and look at that video yeah. and see what Renee ate. I thought she would blow her cookies. I thought she was going to barf for sure. The dog slept through it all, but uh, <laughs> Renee tried something that was. Uh -huh. Outside of her comfort zone. Yes, outside the box. Um, but yeah. It was outside of my comfort zone, too, by the way. <laughs> but, um, yeah, very, very good. Um, went into a little market that was off of a street. Just, it just You kind of just went down this little area, and you were in this market, which was really interesting. And the, uh, I don't know what you call the the, the zonkeys. Yeah, the zonkeys are there, too. <laughs> the zonkeys. Yeah, that's a big touristy thing, I think. Um, but, yeah, that was that was kind of hokey. Yeah, a zonkey <laughs> is where they take a donkey and they paint stripes on it, like a zebra. And then people will go get, you know, get their pictures taken with it. And they really didn't want me to take a picture of their zonkeys mm -mm. because, you know, that's their livelihood. And I get that. They I did show you a picture of it in that video, though. Yeah. But, and they put big hats on the people, yeah. you know, the sombreros. So, yeah, just a, a touristy thing. Um, nice little shops through there. And uh, Luis was a great host. Um, yeah. Tawana, you know, I'm not so sure that you would want to go back there. And most of the areas in Mexico, we felt very safe in going out at night. Mm -hmm. You know, we would go out walking. Uh, in La Paz and Todos Santos and places like that, n no problem whatsoever. Ensenada, we, we went out walking at night. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you see other people, uh, no big deal. Uh, Tawana, a little different thing there. You've got, you know, a lot of people that are wanting to cross the border that are from a lot of different countries. And, uh, and I'm not saying that's bad. You know, I'm just saying that for them to be in the situation that they are in, they are already in a desperate situation. Right. And if they're, you know, they see a gringo flashing around money, uh, you know, and that could be anywhere in the United States, the same thing can be said. Right. Or anywhere in the world. You know, you don't do stupid things, mm -hmm. flash money, flash wealth and all that. And just because you don't think it's wealth to someone that is desperate, it may appear to be wealth. And so I wouldn't go out at night in Tijuana. Uh, but during the daytime, in the touristy areas that we were in, felt perfectly safe. Near the convention center, the cultural center, that's out there near downtown, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, and you had some high-rise buildings around there. And a lot of those are medical buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, medical tourism is big there in Tijuana because you can, 
you know, you can be in California or fly into San Diego and, you know, take a ride across the border to Tijuana and get first grade medical work done uh, where people, doctors are probably trained in the USA or trained in Mexico City mm -hmm. and they're not having to pay big bucks to uh, malpractice insurance companies and they don't they don't take uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield or whatever you mm -hmm. know uh, insurance company is going to try to take 99 percent of what they charge and mark it mm -hmm. off and pay them pennies on the dollar and and you get it done a lot cheaper and uh, so, uh, Tawana was uh, neat. I don't know that I'd want to maybe go back and spend a couple of days looking around but uh, yeah. I'd want I a tour guide because it's like you said, oh, definitely. big. Okay, I guess that kind of wraps up this episode and really kind of wraps up our travels on the Baja Peninsula. Uh, six months ago, we started crossing a national city, went on down to Ensenada, spent a couple of months in Ensenada, worked our way down to La Paz, then to Todos Santos, two months in Todos Santos, mm -hmm. and visited a lot of neat towns, villages, big cities, mm -hmm saw a lot of cool stuff. Now one thing that is neat about the Baja Peninsula as opposed to mainland Mexico is if you're driving. Now if you're flying it really doesn't matter but if you're driving uh, while it is more expensive on the Baja Peninsula than mainland one thing saves you a little bit of money is your tip. Now I'm not talking about what you give to a waiter. I'm talking about your temporary import permit for your vehicle if you are crossing as we did in 2022 at Eagle Pass, Texas, you have to give a tip they, based upon the year model of your vehicle and all and, and that is your temporary import permit and then as you leave the country uh, you file for that and they'll send it back to you hopefully. Uh, in the Baja Peninsula or on the Baja Peninsula there is no tip and so you can drive there and uh, you don't have to pay an import permit and so that was kind of neat. That mm -hmm. saved a little bit of money and the, the trouble of trying to figure it out and understand what was happening. Trying so that, to find it. That was, <laughs> yeah, 2022, it was kind of hard to find because it was probably 15 miles away from the border crossing mm -hmm. was where you had to go to get your tip. So, and that was, uh, that was very interesting <laughs> to say the least. And the other thing is safety in Mexico. A lot of people ask about, don't, did you feel safe in Mexico? <laughs> Weren't you worried? Weren't you, you know, you're, you're fine in Mexico. You really, really are. The people are wonderful. You know, 99% of the people are wonderful. 99% of the people are just as kind and, uh, and tender hearted as you'd want to meet anywhere. It's the 1%. And that's the same way anywhere you go in the world. There's a certain percentage of people that would want to do ill to you or cause harm to you. And so the smart thing to do is remove yourself from the circumstances that would bring about that. Now, can you be 100% safe anywhere in the world? Unless you're in Iceland or Finland, I doubt it. Uh, but uh, certainly not in the USA or you know, Mexico, Central America. No, you can't be 100% safe anywhere. Uh, so, you know, what we tell people is, don't do stupid stuff and you'll be okay. Uh, don't go try to experiment with drugs or buy drugs or sell drugs. Don't transport drugs. Uh, don't go out late at night uh, bar hopping. Uh, don't do stupid stuff and you'll be okay. And, uh, and we're living proof of that. Two years in Mexico and never felt uh, like we were in any danger at all. Mm -hmm. And everything was fine. Okay. Wrapping up our six-month travel on the Baja Peninsula, anything you want to add, Renee? Just, um, it's easy to drive. And what's really neat about it is the desert isn't all flat. We thought it would be. We thought that it was going to be like the Sahara, you know, <laughs> and, you know, just blowing sand and flat. No, it was hot, so we had to keep a check on the temperature, oil temp of the car, and, um... So, you know, watch out for that. And we um, also, you have to watch trucks because, um, or even people who pass when it's not when you're supposed to pass. When you're in the curvy part and you pop around that curve and there's the, the ocean. Mm -hmm. And it is gorgeous. It is some of the bluest, most beautiful water. 
that I think I've seen. And two on the Baja and really across Mexico, some of the most wonderful, friendly, patient people yeah. that you'll ever want to meet. Uh, they really try their darnest to help you. Mm -hmm. And if, if you try to speak Spanish, they're appreciative of that. And uh, we, 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 yeah, we yeah. just had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. All right, a couple things uh, to wrap this one up. I told you I'd show you what the back of the t-shirt looks like. Here's what it looks like, and uh, pick that one up in Toto Santos. I like yeah. my t-shirt. Uh, other thing that I told you about is uh, the coffee cup, and there you're seeing it on the screen now. The coffee cup, uh, we're going to be offering those from our channel a little bit later, but not quite yet, but I do have one extra one like this. Renee, Jenny, and I want to send that out to one of you guys for free. If you're in North America, if you're in USA, Mexico, or Canada, you can enter the contest uh, and I'll mail it to you. It won't cost you anything for, for shipping or handling or any of that kind of stuff. If you're outside of that area, I'm so sorry. I don't know how to get it to you. Uh, number one, in our visit to Tijuana, we ate at Caesar's Restaurant and Renee tried something that no one would have thought that she would try. Tell me what that was. Question number two. Where did Renee break her ankle at? You'll have to look back through our videos within Mexico. Where did Renee break her ankle at? Number three. Look back on our videos in Vermont. When we were in Vermont, one of our videos shows the outside of a place and we talk about or make reference to an old television show. Mm -hmm. Tell us what is the name of that television show. Those are the three questions. Answer those three questions uh, in a comment to us on this video, on the video that you're watching right now, and we will enter you into the contest. Now, all those names will be taken. They'll be put into a hat. Jenny, in some way that we don't know how, but Jenny is going to draw a name out and then we'll let you know on our channel uh, who won that uh, coffee oh cup, God. and we will ship it to you. Hey, thanks for joining us on the journey. We appreciate it so very much. We enjoyed this past six months on the Baja Peninsula, and hope that you did too. Go back and look at all of our videos. There's a lot. Every, every couple of days, we look back on some of our older videos, and there are some really cool places that we've been in Mexico, in the USA, and in Canada, that if you haven't watched them all, you should. Well, we've crossed over into California, and there are some really cool things I want you to see in the next upcoming videos about California. You don't want to miss them, plus our travels over to Virginia, where we're going to be visiting family for a while. Uh, there are some cool videos that you're going to see, and we don't want you to miss them, do we, Jenny? As always. Thanks for joining us on the journey.